Hi, we've done a couple of videos over the past uh, month or two on our solid state refrigerator. And in the second video, I showed some of the initial stages of the construction of this, which is a solid state freezer. The first video covers in considerable detail the design of the enclosure. We go through the assembly and I explain some of the principles behind it. And this enclosure for the freezer is fairly similar. It has a few notable differences though. First of all, this is substantially larger. It has an internal volume of about 90 liters. And rather than the clear glass door, which is convenient for the refrigerator so you can see what's inside of it, we wanted better insulating properties. And so we went with a solid door with more insulation on it because we're going to be running at lower temperatures. In addition, this unit, instead of having six of the 12710 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter by 3 millimeter thick TECs that you can get, can get on eBay for about $4 each, We've gone with 12 on this unit because the more gently you operate these, the lower the energy input, the more efficiently they will pump heat. And so we can lower the power consumption and allow us to get to lower temperatures by going to the 12 TECs. We picked 12 because it's a conveniently divisible number. Each of these TECs has an internal resistance of about 2.3 ohms. And so by stringing them in a series of, say, four parallel series of three or three parallel series of four, six and two, two and six, you can vary the driving voltage to whatever is going to be convenient for whatever kind of power supplies you can easily obtain. And that makes it kind of nice to, to work with the TECs. In addition, the biggest change is you'll notice that we have a remote cooling system. Rather than the localized air cooling that we're using on the back of the refrigerator, we've elected to move the heat dump over to a remote site where we have a pump and radiators and this has a lot of convenience associated with it because you can remove the heat into an area where you don't care about it. In addition it removes all of the noise that would be associated with this. It, it, it is a very quiet system nevertheless the noise is gone. But more importantly it allows you to remote the heat to potentially not just another room but to an environment that has a lower environmental temperature like for example an unheated garage or as you can see, we've got a radiator similar to these extended outdoors to take advantage of the lower air temperature outside. That decreases the amount of electricity that we need to reach a given temperature, increases the coefficient of performance, and reduces the amount of electricity used. What we're going to do today, rather than go through the principles, because I covered that extensively in the first video, is I'm going to demonstrate the cooling operation as we freeze some ice. And as you'll notice, one of these ice trays here has a thermal probe placed in the bottom of it. And we have one liter of water that I'm going to fill up the trays with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to watch with time lapse the temperature versus the time as we cool off the water inside of the freezer. An interesting thing that you'll notice is as we drop the temperature down, the drop will apparently stall at around zero degrees centigrade. 
The reason for that is water is a remarkable fluid in that it has a tremendous amount of heat absorption or release when it changes phase, whether it's from a liquid to a gas or a vapor, as we're going to show you in an upcoming video on uh, evaporative air conditioning. I think you're going to like that. But also when it goes from a liquid to a solid or ice, it takes four times as much heat removal to take the zero degree water and make it zero degrees ice as it takes to remove all of the heat from this tray to bring it down from room temperature to zero degrees. After a period of fixed temperature, you'll then see the temperature begin to drop again as all of the water has frozen and will reach a low equilibrium temperature with the freezer. Once we've done that, then what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the cooling system to the outdoor radiator, leave the power the same, and we'll see how much lower we can get the temperature simply by using uh, outdoor air rather than room air for the cooling. I've also, for this test, removed the blind power supply that we have down here and placed two lab power supplies so that you'll be able to see how much power we're using for the pumps and the fan as well as the TECs so we'll get an idea of what kind of power consumption you need to operate something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the trays, we'll put them in here, close the door, we'll turn it on, and we'll let you watch this over a period of couple of hours as this is processing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one liter, 1,000 cc's of water, and I'm going to fill these trays and then we'll get them in there. Hopefully I can do this without a lot of spilling. I'm using a fixed amount of water just because just freezing the ice doesn't really tell you much about its cooling capacity, but if you know how much water you're putting in there and you calculate that it takes about 2,000 joules per cc to remove uh, the energy for the phase change from liquid water into ice, you'll get an idea of just what kind of actual wattage cooling capacity the device the system has. There isn't a lot of thermal mass in there other than the walls and the air and the ice is going to be the dominant material that's being cooled in here. Good. So we'll get these guys in here. Don't drop it. Hey, success. Now turn on the temperature meter. This will give you an internal temperature. This is the water temperature. This is the time. So we're going to switch on the radiators, or the fan and the pump. Got those blowing right now, and you can hear how loud it is. It's not bad. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hook on, uh, turn on the power supply to the TECs. and run them up to about, about there. All right, you can see the temperature, 15.2, time about uh, 1618, and power used here is around 19 watts. Power used here is almost 200 watts, so call it about 219 watts. Let's get going.
Okay, so interesting thing happened here. I didn't see this uh, occur in one of the previous tests where we went through the freezing operation. And that is, during the ramp down in temperature, the temperature actually went well below freezing for a short period of time and then shot back up and stagnated it right around zero degrees, which is what you'd expect. I'm using distilled water, and I believe what happened is we got a super cooling of the water. The temperature kept going down, but we weren't releasing any heat because we weren't changing phase until the temperature went low enough that suddenly the ice began to form, and once it did, then the temperature shot up and stayed at about zero degrees. It remained there for a while, and then it has continued to drop since then, so the freezing operation probably completed about an hour ago. Now, I went a little bit longer because I wanted us to reach pretty much a stable temperature here so that we can see what kind of cooling we get with this power level, this kind of a radiator indoors. And then what's gonna happen when we run this to the outside radiator with a lower air temperature, what kind of bottom temperatures we can reach. So what we'll do, let me show you that this actually did work. Open this up. It's cold. It's frozen. As you can see, it works. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in here and then I'm gonna take a break from the video for just a minute and I'm gonna hook up the outside radiator and disable this radiator here and then we'll begin the cooling operation again. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so I've hooked everything up to the outside and closed off the internals and you can feel that the tubing here is already beginning to grow a little bit cool uh, because of the outside temperature. In addition, uh, because it's so dry in the winter, and most of the times when you have very low temperatures, you're gonna have dry internal humidity. There's no condensation here, which is kind of a nice thing. If it was a problem and you've got a fair amount of humidity indoors, you can certainly put a little insulating wrap on this if you were to take advantage of an outdoor um, heat dump. Temperature's about 3.1. Uh, I've had the unit off for a little while while I was doing that, so it had a bit of time to warm up. But what we're gonna do is just see how low can you go with the same power settings that we had before within a couple of watts and a lower temperature on the hot sides. So again, we'll do a little time lapse and you just get to see how well this thing performs and basically how far we can go. See you in a little bit. Okay, it's getting pretty late and I really wanna keep this going because the temperature just keeps dropping, but uh, I'm getting pretty tired and so I think we're gonna call it quits. But as you can see, we've gotten the temperature down to minus 14.5 centigrade. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a small analog thermometer outside and the outside temperature is running at about 34, 35 degrees, about two degrees centigrade. And you can feel the tubes, they're quite cold, but because of the dry conditions in here, there's no condensation, no drips. Uh, it's a nice way of augmenting the performance of the Peltiers, reducing the power requirements. We could have lowered this down and had the same kind of cooling effect, or we can get to much lower temperatures using the same amount of power. In an upcoming video, we're gonna be posting in a few weeks, uh, we're going to be getting away from the TEC cooling system, which in, an, in a sealed box is acceptable for its low efficiency. And we're gonna be looking at a desiccant-based air conditioning system that uh, really blows away the efficiency of typical compressor-based air conditioning systems. It's pretty exciting and it's, it's looking like it's gonna really work pretty well. So we're gonna close this down. I wanna thank you very much for watching and uh, please subscribe because it really does help out the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. You have a great evening, good night.